Hello everyone, this is Akash Chauhan and in today's lecture we will discuss the very first lecture of uh, unit 5, okay? And uh, in this lecture uh, we will start with the very basics of stress and we will implement the stress uh, based basic application as well. So first we will go through what is the stress and, uh, and uh, what is the need of a stress and uh, how to, you know, uh, design a stress-based application and what are the necessary files that we need, what are the necessary libraries we need and where to put what. So all these things we will look first of all and then we will implement it in the, uh, you know, ID. So for this lecture, okay, so we will see what is MVC structure. We have already discussed this topic in unit three and unit four. But as I told you uh, at that point of time that we will discuss MVC based structure application in unit five. And this is the time, the correct time to, you know, use MVC based structure because trust is actually based upon the MVC structure. It provides a basic structure to the application. So the proper model and view and controller design would be there. In the next lecture, we will design an advanced uh, web application using stress but in this lecture we will focus only on the first and second point mbc structure and the stress basic application design so as we have discussed this thing earlier as well uh, that if there is a proper structure in your project then it would be super easy uh, to make changes and uh, and to reflect those changes is also very easy to you know build your project once again to make the changes at one place it should not be uh, reflecting uh, you know, all the other codes in your application. So that loose coupling should be there between your code and uh, the structure of your project. So as you, as we have discussed this, I should, uh, you know, recall this, the client would send a request to the controller and the controller would decide that, okay, according to this request, there has to be a one logic inside the application. So the controller would decide according to this request, which business, business logic would be executed so then the controller once choose the business logic the controller would transfer the control to that business logic and after performing that business logic the controller would know okay this is the response from the business logic and over that response or according to that response the controller then will resolve the view it means the controller would decide according to the response of the model or the business logic, which view, which HTML page or which GSP page to be shown to the <coughs> client. Okay, so this is the, this is theoretical aspect of you know, MVC structure, but we will try to implement this structure in our project as well. Let's uh, talk about what is stress, uh, you know, basic application. As I told you, this is also a web application. So you need a J2 W E perspective in your ID. So make sure that you have installed or you have uh, a J2 W E ID. If you are in a C ID, then we'll change the perspective in J2 W E mode. Then what you need to do, simply go to the file new and then choose dynamic web project as we have uh, chosen this for the JSP and the servlet as well, okay? And then the, by default, choose a web XML descriptor as well. You have to tick over the checkbox. This is to create the basic, this is not MVC as of now. This is just simple dynamic web project. We have to design this structure, okay? That is structure we have to provide. So as we have discussed, the stress is MVC model view controller based, uh, you know, the framework. And uh, if that uh, structure is there with your project, then it would be super easy for us to manage the project, to make the changes in the project. For that, we as we uh, have already used web.xml file. I told you that uh, all the requests first come to the web XML file, and then the appropriate business logic will be executed. And according to that business logic, a particular view will be resolved. Okay, but here stress.xml is actually that controller. Okay, so it means first this request would come to the controller. It means whatever request uh, we have discussed it, all the requests first come to the web.xml, but in case of a stress, 
it would definitely come to the web dot xml but after that the for all the request first all the request would go to the web dot xml and then from web dot xml according to what we have written over there we will write that uh, web xml should be able to transfer all the request to the struts dot xml okay why because we want a uh, a proper control in just one file so we want to make a struts dot xml the control file which would control according to this request what business logic will be performed and according to that business logic what view has to be resolved so we want all those controls and commands to be in the struts dot xml so the flow is the request first come to the web xml file and in the web xml file we have to manage something that all the request who has come to uh, which has uh, you know uh, came across to the web xml file would be forwarded to the struts dot xml file so it means the request first go to the web xml and then it would go to the struts dot xml we have to write something in the web xml file in order to achieve that web xml directly wouldn't you know transfer all the request to the struts dot xml for that we have to write something in the web xml we will see what what code we need to write but request first would come to the web xml and then web xml would forward that request to the struts because in the struts dot xml this logic is there which logic according to this incoming request okay we have thousands of models thousands of business logic in the application so which business logic to be performed according to the request so this is this would be inside the struts dot xml so struts dot xml would find the appropriate business logic according to the request okay and according to that model model means that business logic according to that business logic after the execution of the business logic the the business logic function let's say in the servlet there is a service function right so in uh in stress there is a calculate function similar to that we will discuss you know, that function but once that function will be performed or the executed then some there would be some uh, you know return type of the business uh, method let's say the calculate method would return something to the stressed once again then stressed according to the return or the response of the model or the business logic would decide okay which view to resolve or in another word we can say which html page or the jsp page should be returned to the Uh, client as a response okay so stress dot xml would be the control unit of mvc structure in that the control unit would be the stress dot xml instead of web dot xml but definitely request first uh, would come to the web xml and then to the stress dot xml we will see how okay and then out of 10000 business logic a particular business logic will be performed and the based on the response of the business logic coming from the model the controller again the stress dot xml would decide okay which view to resolve to the client or which uh, web content page let's say the html page or the jsp page would be returned to the uh, client side so all things are decided by just one file which is stress dot xml okay so this is the basic structure how it would be inside the uh, id but where to put this web xml file this stress file and where to put the model and the view okay so i have taken a snapshot of the project i am going to discuss so once you you know go to the file new dynamic web project okay choose the web xml default file during the creation of the dynamic web project then what you need to do simply create any package okay inside your src folder then we will see uh, there is a java class in there we will see this uh, during the demonstration of the project but there is one important thing to notice here is the struts.xml is inside the src folder parallel to the package it means you right click on the src okay and as similar to the add package you have to choose the xml file and you have to name this file as struts.xml okay this has to be inside the src folder this is one thing it means now we know where to put this uh struts.xml file 
okay so the controller and the web xml file is usually inside web inf okay web inf folder would contain web.xml this is by default created by the id once you choose this uh, you know web xml default option okay the id would create this for you we will modify it accordingly because this default file would not forward the request to the stress.xml that part we have to do okay so we know where to put stress.xml okay we know where to put web web.xml this is by default you don't need to do anything we have two pages one is input.jsp another one is the result.jsp these are the web content we usually put all these things in the web content folder you right click on the web content and create both of these pages so now we know that okay inside the package there would be a java file we will use we will see how to use it and uh, we will write our business logic inside this java file this is the stress file which would control okay which business logic to be performed okay uh, what is the business logic which is suitable to the uh, according to the request this will be decided by the stress.xml and which is which is which would be the response to this particular request this will also be decided by the stress.xml so this file is very very important the another aspect is the web xml file which would be created automatically if you would choose this thing during the creation and then these are the input.jsp we will see during the, the project demonstration there is one thing we have not discussed about this all these libraries where to get all these libraries okay so for that i have given a link okay you simply go to this link and download all these uh, you know zar files and you simply copy and paste oh, in the library folder because without these uh, zar files we cannot use the stressed functionality like there is a action support class uh, uh, which we would uh, extend so it is similar to the servlet uh, api we will see but without these uh, zar files we cannot uh, use all the stress based functions so this is the basic structure so the initial flow would be like this if we hit a url any url first the request inside this project would come to the web xml file okay then the web xml file would forward that request to the stress.xml why because this is what we want we want to develop a mvc structure in our project so we want uh, all the requests first come to the this is the this is one thing we cannot uh, change all the requests first come to the web xml file and then we can control where the requests would go so we can choose this part that after you know in the web xml we can modify the code of web xml and then all the requests would go to the stress.xml file and inside the stress.xml file it is written according to the request that okay what the business logic to be performed so as there is a one class let's say we have 10 such classes different name of the classes definitely but we have 10 such classes so the stress would decide okay among these 10 classes which which class is most suitable for this request okay because in each class there is a calculate method okay which would be only one method inside one class it means out of these 10 classes okay such classes only one class is appropriate to perform the business logic according to the incoming request so the business logic would be written inside the let's say the java file inside the calculate method it is similar to the service method of the servlet so once the calculate method would be performed or by the container then the control again will come to the stress because the business logic has performed now the control has now again business logic is it means the model has completed its task and returned back to the controller but now controller has the response from the business logic okay there, there is one change before executing the business logic over here and after executing the business logic over here so it means after executing the business logic the stress dot stress xml would have the response from the business logic so according to that business logic now the stress can decide okay we have 10 jsp pages so only one is 
actually according to that response from the model or the thing just logic okay this is what i need to show to the user so then if we can implement this if we can implement this structure it means we have built a mbc structure in our project okay so what is the benefit of this the benefit of this is if we want to make changes in one business logic so where we need to go we don't need to make changes over here we don't need to make change over here not here not here not here only in appropriate class or even not in that class even there is a one method which is called calculate method in that method we have to change the rest of the application would be intact okay so this would give you the simplicity of making changes okay let's say if you want to add more models let's say your project has 10000 model but now you want to make it 50000 model so what do you need to do you will add the information of all those model inside the trust and according to those rest of the 40000 models you have to add 40000 classes inside the package okay it is that simple and then if there is a view related to the business logic then the those information has to be there in this stress.xml so this is all theoretical i i know that it is difficult to get what uh, we are talking about but uh, just uh, give me 2 3 minutes we will discuss uh, the actual code of this project the structure we are able to see and we will also perform uh, execute this uh, you know the project over the tomcat so this is all for you know what we can discuss theoretically about uh, stress and mvc now let's move on to the uh the project we have so let me close all these things so it would be easy for us to understand all the files okay because we want to understand things from the very start okay so let me do that okay so as i told you the first whatever the request is there let, let me execute it okay so we simply uh, right click on the project okay i'll i'll tell you how to create it as we have discussed during the slide file new dynamic web project this is dynamic web project and simply choose a name and then this would be there now we know that if we have chosen the default web descriptor it would create a sorry it would create a web.xml file for you okay so we know that all the requests first would come to the web.xml so let's discuss what is inside the web.xml i told you during the third unit that welcome file list would ensure that if you don't write anything let me execute it it would be similar to the servlet or the jsp okay see the path okay if you can see the path it is saying is trust to for beginner or is trust to beginner okay and we have not called an av source it means the web xml is finding out input.jsp or default.jsp inside our application so we have input.jsp so input.jsp is asking you the x and y and it would add the calculate or it would sorry the add you the number for you it would add the number for you if you click over the calculate button this is inside the input.jsp page okay let's see what is inside the jsp page it is saying you simply use text field as enter x as we can see name y which we can use later on and enter y okay and then we are clicking over the calculate but once we click over the the button okay as you can see this button it is saying that once you click over the calculate button this action has to be performed okay the action is saying that calculate some action has to be performed we will see what is the meaning of that but let's first understand the flow the request first would come to the web xml file okay this request this url request this simple request would come to the web xml file it will see okay i have input.jsp so i am returning that so it will it is showing you the the calculate some page okay which is input.jsp there is one thing here which you might have not noticed that we are using this s n this colon okay we are using s in this colon and 
this s is actually the prefix we have uh, used the tag over here from the stressed tags url uri is the stress or tag if you don't add this line in the jsp page you wouldn't be able to use it like this but why we have used it this is the question right the reason to uh, here is actually this is actually the jsp page but if we ensure if we can prefix it with the s okay it means whatever you are doing with s okay x all the variables you can simply get the the values of this anywhere in this application because it is stress based we are making this process uh, the project is stress based so if you simply add this s and this colon okay then it will ensure you that you can access the value of x and y anywhere in the application okay because you are using this stress tag so you have to use this inside the jsp page if you want to use this x and y anywhere in the application okay without using the request okay you can simply use this as a stressed variable we will see how so this input.jsp is actually asking you the numbers 1 2 3 if i click on calculate let's see it is saying the sum of a and b is 2 4 6 it means somewhere this logic is written which is adding a and b okay somewhere i don't know where as of now but if i am clicking on calculate it is adding up both of these numbers so this input.jsp doesn't contain the calculation logic but it is guiding you it is saying that if you click over the calculate perform this action but as i told you that if the web xml is saying that okay this is actually the you know this is the response this is only for first time if you are not calling any resource so this whole welcome file list is only for the first time when you are not calling any resource okay so this will forward you to this okay and input.jsp is saying that okay if you click on the calculate perform this action but where this action is where it would be it would be it is saying that web xml has has return input.jsp but all the stressed all the urls would definitely go to the stress.xml we had to ensure right we have discussed that we have to ensure that all the incoming request first come to the web xml and then will go to the stress.xml we have created over here okay this stress.xml we'll see what is inside the uh stress dot xml but we had to ensure that only this default thing this web xml file can manage but for rest of the url all the request coming to this web xml would be forwarded to this stress dot xml so how to do that we are saying that all the url coming to this web dot xml would would filter out to this this filter it means all the url all the url for all the url there is a filter we used to add servlet mapping in the servlet earlier in the fourth unit but in this unit when you use stress you have to use filter okay because we want to uh, later on use the action support class so we need to use the filter filter means the urls are coming to this web xml and you are filtering out all the url to stress to filter and where you would find the stress to filter this is the general uh, we have taken this this is not the class i have created over here you please see this is net dot code java stress and the name of the class is sum dot action so this is not that class usually in the servlet when we have created servlet we have given the servlet class over here okay but this is this is actually coming from the libraries we have added over here okay i have given the link you simply copy those library and go to the web inf library and paste over here so this is from these things these libraries we have used okay this is actually the the class they will find from the library you have added not the one you would create so it is saying that uh, by writing this code the filter and filter mapping you are ensuring that whatever the url 
uh, whatever the request would come to the web XML, then it would be forwarded to the stress.xml. This is by default. You simply adding all the URL would filter out as a stress2. And what is a stress2? It is actually the default class which would include the name of stress.xml. This is the default name which would be used inside this class. Okay, so normally this is automatic that the control will be forwarded to the stress.xml. Okay, so uh, we know that uh, only for the first request, if you are not adding any resource in the URL, the request the request will be uh, executed or be uh, the response will be written by the WebXML itself. Okay, input dot uh, JSP is returned to the user. As you can see, I am the user and I'm able to see this JSP page, right? So it is returning me the input dot JSP. But if I click over the calculate button, it is saying, perform this action then what will happen we are in the JSP form and we are clicking over this calculate button then it would again generate a request again it would generate the request request would come to the web.xml file see what is happening again I am actually uh, enter I have entered two numbers and then I am clicking on the calculate button what is happening? You are hitting this URL with the calculate button. Then inside the JSP page, calculate, calculate button is actually mapped to the calculate some action. And this action will be inside the stress.xml. Why it is there? Because once you click over the control, uh, another URL will be generated, which would be similar to like localhost 8080 stress to beginner and then the url it would be something like calculate some action okay this would reach the url would reach to here the request would reach to here this time this will not be performed this time it is saying all the requests are coming to this web xml file filter out as stress 2 and what is the stress 2 is the please forward this to the stress.xml so let's open this stress.xml Stress.xml saying that, okay, if, okay, just let me clear it. So it is saying, if you click over the calculate, this action has to be performed. So inside the stress.xml, this action is there. Let's check. It is saying, okay, and I found the action. So you simply in the XML, you open as a stressed, okay, and then you can create the packages. So inside the packages, we can create multiple actions. Okay. For the same project, you are saying for the same project. Okay. You have a lot of actions. Okay. So let's say we can copy and paste. Okay. We simply change it to two, change it to three. Okay. So what we are doing it is saying that okay whenever this calculate some action is called from the JSP page now the XML this is stress.xml is deciding okay among these actions this is actually being called by the JSP page okay and it is mapped to this package this some action class we have created over here it is saying this if this uh, action has to be performed then the XML file is saying to the container that you have to perform the container have has to perform the calculate method inside the some action class and some action class is inside this package net code Java is trust and then dot action class. So it is saying that if this action is being called then execute calculate method of some class inside the this package. If the JSP would return calculate some action too, then again, this will be performed. This will be performed. So as I told you in the PPT that the XML file is trust. This is the stress.xml file is deciding for an incoming request. What business logic to be performed? Okay, so for this, as of now, this is the same class, but we can have many such classes in this package. So all the different action would map to the different classes. Okay. 
so it means among all these business logic only one logic is suitable for the incoming request okay and the business logic would be written inside the calculate method of some action class here could be the different class and the different method would be same the different class but method would be the same because this is the generic method let's see what is inside this because now the 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 server uh, stress dot xml is saying that perform this calculate method so what is inside the calculate method and why only the calculate method is there let me open the code so it is saying that you have to extend action dot support and action dot support would come from these libraries okay so you don't need to worry about that so action support you have to extend and in the action support there is a calculate method of the calculate method you have to provide the definition of rest are the get and set method of the variable you have mentioned over here so we have x and y and sum so get set methods are there okay these are very simple you can do that our main objective is to focus over the this calculate method as you can see this is returning a string so what we are doing we are actually adding up two numbers we are storing in the sum but we are not returning the sum we are returning success because it is expecting you to return some string it what will happen the control would come to the stress dot xml so it would decide okay in you perform the calculate method and inside the sum action class which is actually there as you can see this is this uh, sum action class and the calculate method is there and see what is returning it is adding up two number storing the value in in sum and it is returning success so it will it after performing the business logic okay it is similar to that let me show you it is similar to that this is the stress dot xml you can uh, think of the controller as uh, as stress dot xml it is saying that okay perform this, this calculate method of a particular class which is some action class so we have 10000 such classes but you have to perform calculate method of just one class and then return back me the response of your business logic so what is happening over here it is returning you the success as a string then the control it would come come back to the stressed once again and it will say calculate method either returns success or the input if it is returning success then resolve it as a result now what is happening here in this in these two lines it is performing this model thing it is choosing the appropriate business logic and executing it getting the response and according to the response the controller again the stress dot xml is deciding okay if it if the logic the calculate method has returned success in that case resolve the view as result or gsp according to the response response is coming from the model as success so according to the success controller is deciding okay return result dot gsp if not then again return the input page we were able to see there okay so this is how the stress dot xml decide that okay among 10000 classes which class has has uh, the calculate method and we need to the container would execute that appropriate method and according to the response of the business logic the controller the stress dot xml would decide okay which view to resolve you can choose any name over here okay any page you can choose but you are, you have to decide okay this part is saying the model part is is being done and here the view part is being done and then in the xml and now you are handling among all these business logic logics you are choosing only one one action and in the one action you are performing the business logic of some action class and inside the calculate method and now you are resolving the views okay it would be returned now the result dot jsp let me show you what is inside the result dot jsp again result dot jsp is actually getting the property you simply write s colon property and the value of x it would print you the value of x again s dot property you are actually getting the value of y and then s dot property you are getting the value of sum where all these values are coming it all the values are coming from this class because it's a 
it is actually extending action dot support calculate it is providing definition to the uh, calculate method and it is also setting up the x and y okay that's why in the result we are able to access x and y and where we have set it we have set it inside the input dot jsp if you remember s we have chosen x what whatever we enter we have chosen x y again the stress variable and this is actually the notation to calculate and it would perform the action this action and then it according to this action again the control would go to the stress it would take all the inputs from the input dot jsp and perform the calculate met, uh, the method execute the calculate method inside some action class okay and inside the sum action class the calculate logic is there it is saying the value of x sum is x plus y and return success and set x and y through set methods of set x and y set x and set y okay it will be automatically mapped okay because you are using action dot support so whatever is coming as a stressed variable it will be mapped into the the action support class you have used and later on in the stress what are you doing you are returning back the result okay you are saying okay if it is success then return result or jsp which is saying you simply print the value of all x y and sum according to that so that's why you are able to see this thing okay sum of 1 2 3 and 1 2 3 is 2 3 5 as you can see the sum of this and this is this so this is the execution flow once again i would tell you that inside this stress.xml make sure that you have all your business logic return as an action okay and for each action there would be a unique class which would perform the calculate method why it would perform calculate method because all those classes would actually extend the action support class which would have the calculate method which would return something as a string so a string if it is success again the stress would decide according to that okay if it is success return this if it is not then return the input.jsp so as we have discussed in our the first request would reach to controller the stress.xml the appropriate business logic will be executed and according to the response of that business logic the controller stress.xml would decide okay which page to resolve to the client so this is all for the basic application of the stress the same uh, uh, project you have to create for your practical so this would be the last unit practical this would be the 5.1 practical i will upload it okay and you have to uh, perform this practical this this would be the assignment of uh, you know uh, this lecture so once you complete this lecture go to the the lab portal of your moodle and simply uh, you know implement this code in your over your pc and upload it over the uh, you know the lab so it would also uh, would help you to complete your lab assignment for the fifth unit okay so i hope things are clear if you don't get anything you can uh, simply comment down below or you can simply message me or call me okay and uh, this this uh, has to be uh, done uh, you know uh, before or after your you know i would not force you to uh, complete it before the mini project okay after you are done with your mini project please do submit your practical as soon as possible okay this is there would be another practical because this is the basic structure of the stress the very basics of stress we have used we will uh, use the more advanced uh, way of using we will see there is a more advanced way of using the stress uh, based application this is the basic structure which has to be clear okay which is mdc based uh, in the next lecture we will see the advanced version of stress and how to design a web application according to the advanced design of stress okay this would also be the mdc based uh, there would be little changes okay we will see but uh, the assignment for uh, you know today's lecture is the practical which you, you can find over the lab portal so thank you guys for uh, you know today's lecture and uh, have a good day